sweet and tangy cheesy meatloaf. Alright, so I'm not really the type of guy that does recipes. I'll use them as a base, but I add a little here, take away a little there, whatever, till I get to where it's tasting how I like it. But for this, I decided to actually sit down and come up with a recipe for my meatloaf. And uh, I'll go ahead and put the, the recipe in the description of this video, but I just kind of want to give you a heads up starting off. Alright, so the first thing I do is take half a cup of chopped onion, half a cup of chopped bell pepper, and I just cook it enough just uh, on a high heat to get that little bit of that crust going. Not trying to cook it down tender or anything like that because it's going to cook in the meatloaf. And then I set it aside and let it cool. Our ingredients for our sauce is a cup of Heinz ketchup, a third of a cup of Sweet Baby Ray's hickory brown sugar, a fourth of a cup of General So sauce, half a tablespoon of soy sauce, half a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and then we have half a teaspoon of minced garlic, a teaspoon of salt, tablespoon of mustard, a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, eighth of a teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of brown sugar. All right, all those ingredients are in a bowl. Now it's time for some whiskey business, and you're just going to make sure that you keep going until you feel like it's all mixed up good, and then we're ready to make the meatloaf mixture. I'm going to start off with two pounds of 80-20 ground Angus because I got that on sale. Some people say it's too high fat content. I say that I've not had any issues with it, so I think there's enough here to absorb it. Next, we are going to um, move on to two large eggs. We'll put those two large eggs in there. And then next, I'm going to take a box of, this case, stovetop chicken stuffing. Uh, just the stuffing mix, whatever your preferred flavor is, pretty much any of that will work. I think the chicken just gives it a little bit more flavor, savory herbs, something like that, cornbread, it'll all work fine. Pour that in there. And then next, after we get that in there, we're going to take our cheese. This right here is a half a cup of cube pepper jack, half a cup of cube Colby jack, and then half a cup of shredded Italian blend cheese. So we'll get that in there, and then next, you remember from earlier, I said about the peppers and onions? Well, they've had time to cool. So they're going to go in there. You don't want to put them in there hot and start, you know, cooking the beef or anything like that. We'll put the onions in. So now we've got them all in there, and I'm going to take a third of a cup of our sauce mixture. I'm going to put a little bit more later, but I always start off with a third of a cup. It's just easy to measure like that, and uh, just kind of work it in. One thing with meatloaf, remember, you want to get it mixed well together, but you don't want to overwork it or it can get tough. And we don't want no tough meatloaf. So there's a lot going on in this. There's going to be a lot to, you know, work. I didn't, you know, beat up the eggs or anything like that before. I think it's just better to put them in there like that. Just work them good. So now I'm going to add a splash, splash or two of milk in there. That just kind of gives a little bit more uh, liquid in there. I'm going to work that in. And uh, oh, now we're going two hands. It's time for some two hand action. You'll notice I'm just folding it in on itself. Um, just trying to make sure everything's getting mixed up. And I told you about the other cup of sauce. Well, it's time for it. Another third of a cup of sauce. And I do this. The reason I break it in two parts is it just kind of lets me control it. And, uh, you know, not get it too runny or anything like that. So now we're just going to keep working it and we're ready to put it in the pan. So you can see I went ahead and took some tin foil and I have heavily sprayed that with some non-stick cooking spray. I just think it's going to help with cleanup. You can get the meatloaf out and uh, as you can see I'm starting to put it in here. And you're just going to keep working that meatloaf in there and then we're going to kind of form it to where the whole pan's got the shape we want. So you can see right here, I'm getting it to where I'm pretty pleased with it. It's filling it up. I had to lift the foil up to make sure it's good, but now we're ready for the sauce. So I'm just pouring the remainder of the sauce. I didn't make any extra sauce. I'm using my fingers at this point. It don't matter. I've been working in it with my hands the whole time. Um, so you're just going to keep working it until you get it looking something like this. Just have the whole top covered. And then we're going to put it in the oven for 375 degrees for 35 minutes. And then I'm going to raise the temperature to 400 uh, for 20 minutes. And then the temperature is then going to go to 450 degrees broil for about five minutes. You're going to want to watch it constantly. 
I actually put a little Parmesan cheese on here for garnish at that time. And uh, as long as you get it to about 155, 160, it's cooked. And here's our finished product. Like I said, I put some shredded Parmesan on it, some parsley and chives for garnish, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I broiled it for about five minutes watching it constantly. It helped it caramelize. Uh, be careful not to burn it. All right, so we made it back to the taste test table. This has cooled down enough to where I only get second degree burns from it. There it is. We got a sweet and spicy, tangy, cheesy meatloaf. Getting hot. Um, I went ahead just to make life a little easier and put it in uh, the foil. You can kind of see it's starting to come off. Uh, about that, though. This is just the, the cheap, very, very thin stuff. So if you get the good stuff, you can lift it out. But right now, this right here will help with cleanup. I don't know about you. It's great if you want mashed potatoes, veggies, stuff like that to go with it. I love a good meatloaf sandwich with about a quarter inch of mayonnaise on each side. This is my thing. So we're going to make this real quick. Yeah. Go a little lighter on the mayo to expedite the process here, I guess. That's one of my favorite lunches is meatloaf sandwiches. Stuff will hold for a pretty good while. Here's a little weird thing. When it comes to meatloaf, I'm all about the edges and the ends, uh, but I'm one of the people, if it's a brownie or something like that, I want the inside. I don't know. I feel like there's something psychological behind that. I don't know. I'm going to cut in here. See what we got. Missed it. Steaming, smoking. Go down there, I like how it's looking inside. Let's see, it's not. I gotta make sure I ain't getting a little aluminum foil on my sandwich either. I ripped it, like I said, thin stuff. Got that cheese going through. We'll go ahead and put the top down on it. There you have it. Let's try us a bite. See what we got right here in the corner. Love it. You can see right there, got a little bit of that Cuba cheese that's melted, pepper jack, Colby jack, sauces, ketchup, barbecue sauce, general sauce, a couple different little things, mustard. Uh, I call it sweet and spicy. Tangy. There's not a lot of heat to this. It's more of a tang, I guess. There you go. Sweet and tangy might be a better term. If you want it hotter, kick it up with some pepper flakes or something like that. Um, you can adjust it. It's right here. Like I said, I've never, ever in my life, to my knowledge, made a recipe exactly for something I cook. So it's right here. I, I try to get a base recipe for it. I actually measured the stuff out that way. If somebody else wanted to try it, they could give it a shot. And, uh, you know, overall, I'm pleased how it turned out. Not the best version I've ever made of this. Like I said, usually I'll tweak a little bit here and there, but I was trying to get a good baseline. And I think that's what I've got here. I think it's a pretty good baseline if you want to just add some stuff to it, if you want to, or you can do it like that. But I love this meatloaf. It's one of my favorite things I make. Appreciate you taking time to stop out and check out the video on the channel. If you saw something that intrigued you, uh, I appreciate if you take the time to like, comment, subscribe, share, and turn on post notifications. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. Turn on post notifications. Until next time, this is Garrett the Griddler saying, 
Let's keep cooking. What do you call it when you eat your meatloaf in the car at night? Paradise by the dashboard light. Rest in peace, meatloaf. Thanks for the memories.